Hello and welcome to Honors Function. In this third lecture on exponential function, we're going to be covering the most important base for all exponential function, the base E. And we will also take a look at an important family built with exponential function, the logistic function, and we'll try to understand what they model. Let's begin with E. In order to study E, we need to take a look at this function f, defined as 1 plus 1 over x to the power of x. x here is a real number, okay? And we know we can't do that because now we have somewhat defined real exponent. Well, let's take a look at this function. Look at the base. 1 plus 1 over x, so this is a variable and the exponent is also a variable, right? So it's not really just an exponential function because an exponential function, the base is not a variable, just the exponent. Here, both of them are variable. The other thing that we want also here is we want to make sure that the base is above 1. So in order for that to be true, we need to make sure that 1 over x is positive. I need to add something to 1, and that will be true if x is positive. So actually, let's restrict our condition from x in R to x positive so that our base is positive right there, okay? All right, so let's take a look at this function. As I said, it is now defined, but um, we're still moving in a very shaky foundation here. Uh, let's not dig into the word define because we really have not defined variable exponent. But let's assume we have, okay? So let's take a look at this function. I've already plugged it in the calculator, so let's check out the graph of it. All right, here's a function into y1, and let me look at the graph. Here's the graph of the function. Now you can see the function right here. This is 1, this is 2, this is 3. The function seems to be uh, growing, but very, very, very slowly. Let me increase my x max right here. Let me go to my window. And for x max, let me take like 100. Let's see what's going on, if it's growing in a bounded way or in an unbounded way. I'll go over the difference. Wow, look at that. It is pretty flat, right? So it looks like it's going up, but it looks like it's never going to pass 3, right? It looks like it's never going above 3. This kind of uh, increase is called a bounded increase, okay? The function is growing, but boundedly. Bounded means it has an upper boundary. It will never go over a certain value. That denotes the presence of an asymptote. Let's check out the table. So I'm not sure what kind of setting I had in my table before, but even 200, I don't like that. I want to go much faster. So let me go to table set, start at zero and move by, let's move by 100 right here. And let's check out now our table. All right, look at that. Look at my Y value. So 2.70, 2.7115, 2.7115, 2.7115, 2.7115. One six, one six, one six. Okay, so it looks like I have three numbers now, right? Seven, one, six. And if I go up, I don't yet have the next one. No. All right, you know what? Last thing I'm going to do is go to table set and let me move by 1,000. Why not? Let's be bold. 1,000. Here we go. All right, let's see if we can grab more digits now. So we have uh, 713, 717, 717, 7178, 179, one, oh, 718. Okay, and I'm already at 10,000. I'm not sure the 8 is going to budge here. I'm going up. I don't know if I can still go higher. Yeah, it doesn't look like the 8 will budge, right? It looks like I'm stuck with this 8. I think, I think the 8 will stay. You can do it one more time, but it looks like we have three digits. 2.718, okay? Well, guys, by definition, I know you're going to love that, but by definition, this asymptote, this, this horizontal asymptote, uh, we're going to call it E, 
okay so I want you to remember now the definition of E this is a very important definition E is the limit as X approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over X to the power of X now between you and I this is not the best introduction for E but uh, you need other tools to have a, a better introduction there is a nice approach of E that uh, you you see when you have some series under your belt uh, you may see that in calculus E can be written as 1 plus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial plus plus 1 over n factorial plus forever okay um, do you remember the factorial notation uh, 2 factorial is just 2 times 1 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1 okay so on and so forth right 4 factorial would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 right uh, this is a factorial notation so this is one another way to look at E there are so many various approach of E why did I choose this one because we had just cover real exponents and we know what an asymptote is and that's the definition I just want you to know okay all right now that we have defined E let's uh, talk about the most important base for all exponential base E so let's take a look at this function I'm looking at the function y equals exp base E of X now because E is the base we use in math I'm just not gonna specify it and I'm gonna write exp of X right so here it means E when you don't see anything it means E okay so let's quickly graph the function E is 2.71 it's above 1 therefore the graph goes like this right and what you need to know is that this is 1 0 and at 1 so it's gonna be a bit squished right here at 1 the Y value is supposed to be 2.71 right so this is 1 e here is the exponential function base e for reasons I cannot explain this is the only base we use in math when we talk about exponential function so what happens if you have another base suppose suppose you have a to the x right here and a is not e you can always rewrite that in a base e and that's what we do all the time so we'll find something we we'll find a k right here we don't know what k is but there's always a possibility to rewriting a base a as a base e okay um, that's something we're gonna do at the end of this unit let's go over the first example now actually I'm gonna let you work out example 1 and 2 they should be pretty okay it's uh, um, uh, examples we have done before but now we're just looking at base e okay so try to work them out please and let's go over this uh, very important series of example these results you will have to understand where they're from and you will have to remember them too okay alright so in this question I'm gonna look at the expression 1 plus 2 over x to the power of x right here and in the end what I want to do really is take the limit of this as x approach infinity you will need to remember this result um, but you will understand it also okay I know I just covered that the limit as x approach infinity of 1 plus 1 over x to the x I know this is e and I'm wondering what is this one right here how does it work all right so with a series of questions I'm gonna guide you towards answering this limit right here and then you'll do more on your own you will see it's always the same all right so the first thing I'm asking you to do is to do a substitution replace x over 2 by y okay so if y is equal to x over 2 okay if then here I don't have uh, x over 2 I have 2 over x 2 over x is equal to 1 over y right and also x what is x right here if y is equal to um, x over 2 x is equal to y so if you replace if you substitute 2 over x by y this expression becomes what it becomes 1 plus 2 over x so that's 1 over y to the power of x so th to the power of 2 y okay so that's all I'm asking you to do in this question is substitute x over 2 by y and rewrite rewrite this expression right here done second question 
if y is equal to x over 2, what is the limit of y as x approaches infinity? Well, what is y? This is equal to x over 2. So as x approaches infinity, x over 2 approaches, well, infinity. Okay, that really should make sense. Finally, let's try to understand this uh, limit question right here. So I want to answer the limit as x approaches infinity of the expression we just looked at, 2 over x to the power of x. To do that, I will do a substitution, okay? The substitution we just did. And I'm going to replace here, I'm going to replace x over 2 by y, okay? The expression we just mentioned it, it is 1 plus 1 over y to the power of 2y, right? And the limit, what happened as x approached infinity? Well, check out the previous question. If x is approaching plus infinity, y is also approaching plus infinity. Therefore, it's a limit as y approaches plus infinity, right? I mean, we went over this part right here in the previous question. So now I've changed my limit. This is um, typical work we do with limit. We substitute a variable for another one and we try to understand this new limit right here. So this, what I'm saying, this, I can find it, okay? Because do you see like this somewhat e right there, right? If you have 1 plus 1 over y to the power of y, this as y approach infinity, this is e by definition. So here it's to the power of 2y. Is that a big deal? No, it's not. Check it out. This is the limit as y approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over y to the power of y to the power of 2 right here, right? It's a square. All right, now, there's no y in here, right? This is not a function of y. Therefore, this limit right here I can bring it inside the bracket because it's not going to change anything. There is no y there. Here, I am not being um, very technical. Uh, we would have to talk about continuity of a function for that and how it plays with limit. But I don't want to look at that. We cannot look at that, okay? I'm just telling you, you don't have a variable y in here. Therefore, the limit, you can bring it inside, okay? Because nothing on the outside is going to move when y changes. Here, y is approaches infinity, okay? Here, nothing changes with y, right? So you can bring the limit inside. All right, let's see what we have now inside. We have, so this stays outside right here, and inside we have the limit as y approach infinity of 1 plus 1 over y to the power of y. Now, what is this? This is e, right? If you take the limit, you will find e. So it's e to the power of 2, that's just e squared. Got it? That's a limit. The limit is e squared. All right? Okay, let's go over one more example. So let's check out this limit right here. The first thing I'm going to do is substitute, right? Substitute what? Substitute y for x over 3. Now, if you do that, uh, you're going to have two things. You're going to have 3 over x is going to be 1 over y, and you're also going to have that x is 3y, okay? Here's a 3 over x, and here's the x. And you also have that, you also have that. Um, as x approaches infinity, y approaches infinity. Okay, good. So let me substitute, let me change my limit right here. The limit as x approach infinity of 1 plus 3 over x to the power of x is just the limit as, okay, as y approaches infinity. You can show that this expression is the same as 1 plus 1 over y to the power of 3y, and here everything is a function of y, right? This is going to be the same as the limit as y approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over y to the power of y, and here everything cubed. There is no y in this one right here. That doesn't change with y. That stays the same no matter what y is. Therefore, I'm going to put the limit as y changes inside, right? So this is 
the limit of 1 plus 1 over y to the y as y approaches infinity and inside we recognize e okay therefore the limit is e cubed right here do you start seeing a pattern here so please do number four in the same way and I guess I'm gonna let you work out number eight to see if you are intuitive and number nine and number ten um, these are pretty uh, and number eleven also uh, these are pretty um, um, systematic problem you just have to be a little bit intuitive okay let's talk about logistic function now so we're gonna be looking at a family of function that looks like this um, a real number divided by one plus a times e to the power of negative k t okay a c and k a c and k are positive real number pay attention to the negative sign right here uh, it has to be negative okay um, this is a very important family of function that is used to model population growth um, not just human population but any type of population let's try to understand how it goes t i should have mentioned that t represents the time right so what what we do all the time when we have this kind of function where t is the time we look at the initial amount what's the initial amount here c divided by one plus a times e to the power of zero now this is just one so it is just c over one plus a okay this is um this is initial amount initial quantity the other thing I want to do, we could show that actually this function is increasing. The other thing I want to do, and we've done that, is look at the limit of the function as t approaches infinity. As time goes on, where does the function representing a population goes? Okay, so let's try to understand that. Uh, let me rewrite it here. We have c over 1 plus a times e to the negative kt. All right piece by piece what do we have negative kt t is approaching plus infinity right t approaches plus infinity k is positive so negative kt approaches negative infinity i hope it makes sense right now i have e to a power of something that approaches negative infinity e to the power of negative infinity right basically it's e to the power of negative infinity right here so i'm looking at this side of the curve okay and so e to this power approaches zero zero i'm right here zero i multiply this by a so it's going to approach zero right if you multiply by a it's gonna still be zero plus one plus one well that's still gonna be one right one plus zero is one and therefore the limit is c okay so the number at the top that you see right here this is the limit of this function as t increases basically the function looks like that so you start at c over one plus a right here and then there is a pretty uh, sharp increase. This is the exponential part of the graph right here. And then it plateaus. And then you have right here, so let me add a little bit more right here. You have the limit, C, right here. Uh, this is called the maximum sustainable population. Maximum sustainable population. Um, and it's due to various factors, physical factors, prey and predator model physical factor maybe it's a limited space um, different things that um, make that the population has a maximum sustainable population living on a very specific area okay this is a very typical model again to represent population increase let's go over an example with this model actually i'm gonna let you do number 12 and 13 it's a direct application of what we just covered thank you for watching